This is part 53 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss if JavaScript is object-oriented programming language. Yes, JavaScript is object-oriented programming language. Here, we have the four pillars of any object-oriented programming language. Inheritance, encapsulation, abstraction, and polymorphism. We'll discuss examples of these in a later video session. For now, let's concentrate on creating objects in JavaScript. Objects in JavaScript can be broadly classified into two categories, standard built-in objects, custom objects. What are standard built-in objects? So far in this video series, we have already seen many of the JavaScript standard built-in objects. Examples include string, array, regular expression, date, etc. In this example, notice we are using the date constructor function to create an instance of type date. And on that date instance, we are calling getFullia method, which is going to return the current date. Custom objects. In C Sharp, to create a custom object, we first create a class and then create an instance of that class. However, in JavaScript, we don't have the concept of classes. Instead, we use functions. In JavaScript, there are two ways to create a custom object, constructor function and literal notation. First, let's look at an example of using constructor function to create an object. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So we want a function. Let's call this function employee. And this function is going to have two parameters, first name and last name. Now we want the employee object with two properties, first name. So this dot first name. So here, this dot first name represents the property of the employee object and we want this property to be initialized with the value that is present in this parameter first name similarly we want to have last name property within the employee object and that should be initialized with the value that is going to be present in this parameter last name and we want this employee object also to have a method and we want the name of the method to be get full name. So this we want to be a function, so function. And what do we want this get full name function to do? We want to return the full name of the employee, first name and last name separated with a space. So return this dot first name and to that append space and to that append last name. So here we have a constructor function employee which is going to construct an employee object for us with first name last name properties and get full name function. So now let's go ahead and create an object where let's call the variable employee equals we're going to call employee constructor function and this employee constructor function expects two parameters first name and last name we want the first name to be Prajim and we want the last name to be tech. So what's going on here? Both of these values gets passed into the parameters of this function constructor. So Prajim gets passed into first name, tech gets passed into last name, and those parameters are used to initialize the properties of the employee object, first name and last name respectively. And then this get full name method is going to return the full name of the employee. So now let's go ahead and spit out first name, last name, and full name to the document. So document.write, we want first name. So first name equals, we have the employee object dot first name property should give us the first name of the employee. And let's also append an HTML break. Similarly, we want to retrieve last name and full name. To get last name, we use last name property. And to get full name, we use get full name function of the employee object. All right, let's save these changes. Load the page. Notice that we get first name, last name, and full name as expected. So here we are using a constructor function to create an employee object. Now let's see how to do the same thing using object literal notation. So here, this is the constructor function. Let's comment this for now. Now we want to create 
an employee object using little notation. So I'm going to use variable and then create an object with name employee. And this employee object should have two properties, first name and last name. First name, colon, and we specify the value for that property. So we want Prajim to be the first name. And we separate the properties in literal notation using comma. So comma, we want to have another property, last name, and we want the value to be tech. And we also want to have a method. And let's call that get full name. And we want this to be a function. And we want this function to return the full name of the employee object. So return this dot first name to which we want to append space and then append last name. Okay, so here we're using little notation to create the employee object. So we already have the employee object. Employee object's first name is Prajim, last name is Stack, and this method is going to return the full name. Since we already have an object here, to retrieve the first name of the employee object, we simply call first name property on that, and last name, and get full name. Okay, all right, so let's save these changes, and let's reload this page. You know, the output should not differ in any way. Here we are using the object literal notation to create the employee object. Now, let's look at the differences between using a constructor function versus literal notation. Now, in the constructor function, notice that, so this is the constructor function. Notice that here, we are separating the properties and their values using an equal to sign. Whereas in literal notation, the properties and the values are separated using a colon. And within constructor function, at the end of every property, we can have an optional semicolon. Whereas in literal notation, the properties must be separated by a comma. And with constructor function, we first have to create an instance of the employee object using that constructor function, something like this. So if I want an employee object, so let's uncomment these. So if I want an employee object, I will have to say var e equals new employee and then specify the value for first name and last name. So we have to first create an instance of the employee object using that constructor function. And then if I want the first name property, I simply say e dot first name. But with literal notation, we already have an object. So we simply call first name property to retrieve the first name property value. So here we have those three differences. There is yet another major difference between um, you know, constructor function and literal notation, which we will discuss in our next video session. Thank you for listening and have a great day.